let's kick off a video series on labor economics. And this video series will be too much helpful for the students who are taking the course of labor economics for the first time, and also for the students who are doing their graduate studies either in master level or in PhD level. So this video series course will be based on two textbooks, and the main textbook is this one. Uh, Modern Liberal Economics Theory and Public Policy, 12th editions by uh, Ronald and Robert. And the second textbook that I will cover in this video series is uh, titled Liberal Economics by George J. Borgers from the Harvard University. So I will combine these two books to provide you the most valuable video series for the Liberal Economics. So uh, let's go through uh, what we are covering overall in this video series. So this video series will be divided into five parts. The first part, or uh, the first chapter that we will cover in this short video, we will have a quick introduction on labor economics, and also the second chapter we will cover uh, a quick overview of labor demand and supply, and also the third part will be a deep dive on the concept of labor demand and the fourth part we will have a deep dive on the concept of labor supply and finally in the last part in the final part which is the fifth part we will cover some special topics in the labor economics uh, concepts such as productivity inequality labor union and etc so let's go through the the first part which is an introductions on labor economics so in this part i will be covering three most important topics. First one, we will have a simple definition uh, on labor economics. What is labor, labor economics and why it's important? And then we will go through some basic concept within the labor economics, which is positive economics, normative economics, efficiency versus equity. And the last part, which is the third part, we will cover some basic research concept within the labor economics such as univariate test multiple regression analysis and also omitted variable bias within the concepts of labor economics so let me start the definition of labor economics by a quote from george jaborges from harvard university that he has a book on labor economics that we will use some parts of that books in this video series as well he says that most of us will allocate a substantial fraction of our time to the labor market. How we do in the labor market helps us to determine our wealth, what we can afford to consume, and with whom we associate, where we spend our vacation, and which school our children attend, and even who finds us attractive. Not surprisingly, we are eager and interested to learn how the labor market works. So now let's provide a definition about labor economics. Labor economics is the studies of how labor market works. So we have to answer this question: What is labor economics? Then, uh, uh, as as I talked, that uh, it studies how labor market works. But now, what is labor market? Labor market is a system, don't forget that, it's a system where individuals or workers offer their skills, abilities, and time to employers or firms in exchange for wages or other forms of compensation. By this definition, we can uh, clear that, that there is employer in the market which is their demander for the labor and there is employees or workers in the market which they are supplier for the uh, labor market and also there's wages which play as a role of price in the labor market so let's go through this uh, another topic which who are the main actor in the labor market who are in the labor market actually there is three main actors in the labor market workers are individuals firms are employers and government 
Let's talk about each of them, why they involved in the labor market and what they want, what they do. Let's start from the workers or individuals. Workers are the superstar of the labor market. Because if there is no workers, so there is no labor and there is no labor market. So they decide whether to work or not. And how many hours to work how hard to work, which skill to acquire, when to quit a job, which occupation to enter, whether to join a labor union or not. Each of this decision is driven by a desire to optimize. To optimize what? To optimize their well-being, to optimize their happiness. So they want to choose the best option among different alternatives in order to maximize their well-being or their utilities from working in the labor market. So let's go through the second uh, important player or actors in the labor market, which are firms. Firms are the co-star in the labor market because the firms are attracting the labor. They want to hire the labor. So the firms should make decision on how many and which type of workers to hire or to fire. The length of working hours in a day or the length of working hours in a week. How, what type of working environments to provide for the workers and what combination of capital and labor to choose in order to produce the output. So they also have motives by entering the labor markets. So what are their motives? So their motive is to maximize their profit. So firm by combination of labor, capital, and other forms of factors, and by changing input to output, they want to supply their goods and services to the market so and they want to maximize their profit. The firms in the labor market react to the wages. So if the wage level for the labor in the labor market increases, so the firms are trying to reduce the number of their workers because when the wages increase, so the output cost will increase. So they cannot supply more output in the labor market in the, in the market. So, but when the labor price or the wages will decrease, so the firm will hire more labor because now the labor costs decrease. So by hiring more labor, they will produce much more output in the market. So by doing this, they want to maximize their profit. And the last actor in the market, in the labor market specifically, is the government. So why the government engage in the labor market? Because the government want to regulate the market in order to promote economic stability, ensure few, uh, fair competition, protect worker rights, and uh, redistribution of income among different categories in the, in the society. Overall, the main objective of the government by entering in the market, by regulating the market, is to increase the social well-being, to increase the overall well-being of a country, of a society. So now let me talk about this, why the labor is unique and how they should be treated differently than other goods and services. So labor is unique in several ways than other forms like goods and services. Although there's a labor supply and labor demand in the market, so labor supply and labor demand in the market is different from the goods supplies and goods demand in the market. Because there's two unique, distinctive difference between labor and other form of supply and demand in the market. Why? Because labor services can only be rented. They cannot be bought. You cannot buy them. You can only rent them. So wages is a kind of rent for the labor services. And also labor services cannot be separated from workers. So when we hire workers, you, you should think about working conditions, about risk of injury, about personality of managers, and many other things that may affect labor decision. So you should think about them as well.
Now let's go through some basic concepts in the labor market and the labor economics. Labor economics will be conducted on two levels. When we are doing research in labor economics, your research will be either positive economics, normative economics, or the combination of them. So uh, what's positive economics? Positive economics is a narrow part of labor economics when we talk about the context of labor economics. Positive economics just will answer about what it is. A simple question. It will talk about what the reality in the market is. It will talk about what is already observed in the real world. So there is no value judgment. You cannot say that it should be like this or it should be like that. It's already there. It's already observed. You cannot be angry or disagree with that because it's already clear. So it's already conducted based on the data available and based on the models that there is already there. So. There are some of the questions that we can cover in the context of positive economics and labor economics, like what is the impact of minimum wage on unemployment? Or what is the impact of immigration on the earning of native born workers? What is the impact of tuition assistance program on college enrollment rate? What is the impact of unemployment insurance on the duration of a spell of unemployment? These questions can be answered by positive economics. So, when you answer, for example, any of these questions, we should think about two basic assumptions in the context of positive economics. The first one is scarcity. Let me talk like this. When we think about the impact of minimum wage on unemployment, when the minimum wage increased by the government regulations, so it will lead to some combination of decision making by workers and by employers. Why they do so? Because of their scarcity. There's scarce resources. Now, labor will decide how to allocate their most important and scarce resource, which is their time, by increasing minimum wage either to, either to work more or either to less, work less. And by increasing the level of minimum wage, firms are also may decide about their important scarce resources, which is their money. Now, they may think about either to hire more labor or less. Why they do this decision making? This decision making will be guided by some desire, which I already talked about, which is utility maximization by the workers and profit maximization by the firms. So these are the two concepts. And this uh, utility maximization and desire will comes, on, comes out of the rationality assumption. What rationality is? Rationality assumption says that economic actors may have objective, may have desire. And they will choose the best to fulfill that desire. So the desire is utility maximization and profit maximization. So they will choose how to use their most important scarce resources in order to take that desire, in order to achieve that desire. So now let's go to the normative economics. Normative economics is a broader topic or area. It talks about what should be rather than what it is. So here, in normative economics, we will have some value judgment. We can agree or we can disagree because it can be valued from different perspectives, from different ideas, based on different judgment, based on different categories of people. For example, let's talk about this question. This question: uh, Should a country accept more immigrants or not? If we want to answer to these questions, we have to think about many other perspectives and concepts. For example. We should think about two main questions. Whose well-being we care about? If we care about like immigrant well-being, it's obvious immigrants will be better off. But if we think about the 
native born people perspective they will be worse off if we think about nationally overall the national income will increase because now immigrants come to the market and they will work native people will work and moreover we will have more national income so in terms of national interest is good so we should desire which perspective you are seeing and also now when more immigrants comes national interest increase immigrant better off native people worse off so now the government should think about equity and efficiency attracting more immigrant is efficient but is it equitable or not so now the government will decide to apply some policy like redistribution of income by redistribution of income again the government will think about the equity equality in the society so by income redistributions also efficiency and equity will be taken consider so here when we talk about equity and efficiency sometimes when efficiency increases equity will decrease sometimes when we try to increase equity efficiency will decrease we should try to make a balance between these two things so in this video we just talked about the basic concepts of labor economics the definition and positive normative economics in the next video we will cover some uh, basic research concepts in the labor economics if you like this video i hope uh, you will watch next videos as well and uh, i request you to subscribe this youtube channel uh, in order to be able to watch the next videos as well thank you see you next time